What's happening everybody, the poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today's video is about the iBuyPower Height Y60 build. And I said build in particular because yes, the Height Y60 case has made you know waves throughout the whole tech social media scene uh, due to a number of reasons, good reasons. Um, but this build in particular is actually put together by iBuyPower. So iBuyPower is kind of like the umbrella. Height is a subsidiary in a way of iBuyPower. And Height has made a couple of interesting cases, the Y60 being one of them, and the Revolt 3, another small form factor case that I did do a thorough review on, so go ahead and check my previous YouTube video on that. So a lot of interesting airflow. You have the airflow coming up like this. Then of course we have the GPU, which is vertical, so the airflow is gonna be kind of different, right? Compared to how it's coming up from the bottom of the case. Then of course we have the airflow coming from the side of the case, wrapping around. And then of course, air being exhausted from the top as well. So it's, a, it's moving and grooving inside here, but as long as the air stays fresh and cool, it honestly doesn't really matter what direction and 90 degree angles it has to go as long as it keeps moving, right? So also, this is basically a three slot card for the most part here for this gigabyte. It's, it's screwed in for two slots, but then it crouches over to like two and a half. So basically it's a three slot card, which means there's not a lot of room between the fans here and the glass. So the initial, you know, historical concern is, hey, you have a vertical mount uh, for your GPU. It's right next to the glass. You're going to be killing your thermals. Well, let's see. Obviously, my game of the hour that I've been playing and talking about on TikTok and uh, Instagram, Twitter is Star Citizen. Star Citizen is a game that is the new crisis. It's extremely demanding. It's not optimized whatsoever because it is an alpha. And therefore, you need a decent CPU, decent GPU, good amount of RAM just to run at maybe 30 to 40 frames per second. So it's an excellent benchmark for, hey, how are temperatures for a demanding game? Uh, can it game for Star Citizen? Can it play Crisis? And is this enough RAM? 16 gigs? Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this is RAM that's very common. I actually have a bunch of these sticks just laying around. So that's another thing that iBuy Power has definitely been improving upon, where when you have a build like this, you're actually getting parts that you'd probably want to buy in the store. You know, a decent motherboard, decent RAM, um, the AIO, we're going to test it to see if it's actually decent. It is, you know, labeled I buy power. So let's uh, get into it. Star Citizen is downloading right now. This is over Wi-Fi 6. Nifty little antenna right here. And uh, it is actually downloading at mm, about 100 gigabytes per second. Not too bad. No, I'm sorry, 100 megs per second. <sighs> I, I hopped into the future really quick. So as Star Citizen is installing on this, I want to say that this is more of a pre-release build from Abai Power. So it's still going to have some of the uh, labeling, like the etched uh, glass sketching that's going to say something about Abai Power and Abai Power logo and a few other things. So this is not the finished product. Um, I was, you know, lucky. Abai Power said, hey, do you want to review a PC? And I said, yes. So this is what happened. Um, so the box that this came in if you saw my uh, previous youtube video when i picked this up and tiktok video as well that's not going to be the standard box for the i buy power one that was more the the generic box for the y60 case okay so the cpu right now has maxed out at 63 degrees that's the 12 700 kf processor and the gpu is the rtx 3070 ti so just going to load the game see how this goes and just get right into the universe here. So this is the first time loading Star Citizen on this iBuyPower uh, Height Y60 build. So when it comes to a game like this, it's gonna be loading all those like texture shaders, all that stuff for the first time. And with only 16 gigs, eh, this may take a little while. So this monitor right here is the HP Omen 27C. It's a QHD curved 240 hertz gaming monitor. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, if you guys uh, want more info on it, I will put a link for this uh, down below in the description. So let's get up and see how this plays. First things first for Star Citizen. And you can see that I'm in my PJs. Interesting. I guess I died. I died at some point, yep. So to see your FPS in Star Citizen, you hit the tilde key, R, 
underscore display info space one. Enter and then hit tilde again. So up here, you're actually gonna see your FPS. And so it is starting off right now, I'm not moving or anything really, at 52 FPS, which is pretty darn cool. And then you hit I, well, let's get a better view here since I'm in my PJs. Um, yeah, let me change. Okay, now that we've changed, that looks much better. Nice little stylish outfit to be a citizen in the universe. All right, so we're in a city called Area 18 on Art Corp and playing Star Citizen. And right now it's showing roughly about 45, 35 to 55 FPS. So that's kind of normal, honestly, for being in this area for this type of hardware, 12700KF processor and RTX 3070 Ti. So I wanted to pause right here because I noticed the audible levels for the fans increased. Um, it's not loud by any means. I have my mic right here. So I'm right next to the PC. This is darn good. The leaf blower guy outside is many times louder than what this PC is doing right now while it's at um, 50 FPS. So if we alt tab out, we'll be able to see here that the 12700KF processor maxed out at 74 degrees right now Celsius. And then when it comes to the GPU, it's maxed out at 73, almost 74 degrees Celsius with the memory junction maxing out at 78 degrees Celsius. So that's impressive. Let's, uh, let's get back into Star Citizen. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, yes. <laughs> So in Star Citizen, there's a lot of things you can do. This room is more like the uh, stellar stock exchange in a way where you can buy and sell goods. And right now the frame rate is about 50 FPS. So it seems like around 50 FPS here in area 18 is pretty average. So now here I'm over on the tram. Uh, the FPS did drop down to about 25 frames per second. And uh, you know, no surprise there, to be honest. When you're in a major city, things get kind of rough. Now, somebody did jump on the tram with me. They are not as stylish as I am. Mm-hmm, yep. Yep, get some fashion sense, buddy. Get some fashion sense. Look at that. Style. Style, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people haven't seen this particular ship. The 890 jump. It's my space yacht. So when you're in the elevators, your frames definitely shoot up because not much is going on. But when you see a big ship like this, yeah, this is serious. <clears throat> so your frame rates may drop a little bit, as you can tell. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to show you how big this ship actually is. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's not a, not a small ship at all. So this is about as far as I can zoom out and we can barely get this whole ship in here. Flight ready right there. There we go. So this is what the outside of the 890 jump looks like. I'm zoomed out pretty far, so that's why it's kind of clipping like that into the walls. But massive, massive ship. And as I'm looking at this, hitting about 45 FPS. Not bad at all. I'm going to go down to the first floor. Yes, the spaceship does have a swimming pool. And not only does it have a swimming pool, but it has a jacuzzi. So the FPS is sticking around 56, 57, not bad at all. There's sauna rooms, there's elevators, and here's the swimming pool. So not bad, 45, 40 to 45 FPS right here at the swimming pool. And now 50 when I'm in a third person. And so I'm thinking that the Iba Power Height Y60 is passing the Can It Play Star Citizen test. It's quiet. It's not screaming, it's able to play the game, and this is actually 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm noticing 
that there is some like stuttering here and there, especially at the beginning because of the lack of RAM, but yeah, it's upgradable. So after playing Star Citizen for 30 minutes, the CPU has maxed out at 86 degrees. And let's go down to the GPU now. And the GPU itself has actually maxed out at 81 degrees with the GPU memory junction maxing out at 82 degrees. So you can see the RAM is definitely maxed. It, it, that, that's max RAM. So uh, we're swapping between the, the memory and the NVMe drive that's in here. It is a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive. I'm sorry, two terabyte NVMe drive. I don't know why I said one terabyte. Uh, so it's a Western Digital Black SN 750, uh, two terabyte. So it's a very fast drive, which is helping for its lack of memory. So clearly the Iba Power Height Y60 survived Star Citizen and the temperatures were all in check. There was no thermal throttling, the audible levels were very low. So let's round this out by running TimeSpy. Uh, 3D Mark is a benchmarking application. Everybody can download it right off of Steam. And TimeSpy is a very popular one. It'll run uh, different, basically, scenarios to test the GPU and then, of course, the CPU as well. The CPU test is, um, I don't want to say hardcore or anything, but it actually does a very good job of kind of briefly stressing it to see if it will thermally throttle. So the Height Y60 build here by Abba Power just finished the Times by uh, benchmark. It got a score of 15,135, so the GPU score was 14,922. CPU score 16,467. And that's basically saying that we're getting 140 FPS in games like Battlefield 5 at 1440p. Uh, let's see here, GTA 5 will be 85 plus FPS. Uh, Fortnite, 120 plus FPS. So basically smooth as butter. Uh, we can actually then uh, compare this online and it'll tell us exactly how well it's done. So this is in the top 87% of its category. So you're, you're doing all right, my 60 case. You're doing all right. So after running times by the temperatures and hardware info reported as 78 degrees for the 12700KF processor and 82 degrees for the Gigabyte 3070 Ti. Pretty good. So now I'm running Cinebench R23. This is a benchmark that's specifically hitting the CPU, the 12700KF processor. And it's running along pretty nicely so far. The noise level for the AIO up top has increased, but it's more of a sound of, well, here's the microphone. It's basically the sound of air moving. So no real like loud fan noise or anything like that. Uh, so entirely acceptable. So I'm gonna let this run for about 10 minutes to see if there is any thermal throttling on the CPU and um, what the final temperatures are. So we have some interesting results with this Cinebench R23 run. It ran for 10 minutes, so it was a full soak. And this AIO is kind of interesting. The 12700KF processor hit 100 degrees Celsius. And that's not a good thing. Uh, basically, it thermally throttled. So I'm running Hardware Info 64 to monitor all the temperatures. We have 100 degrees Celsius right here. Thermally throttling, yes it did, and yet, it's still got a decent score of 22,770 in Cinebench R23. As a frame of reference, the brand new, all in the news, you know, Studio Mac with its M1 Ultra chip um, got about like 24,000 points. So it's basically right in line with that while it's thermally throttling at 100 degrees Celsius. So um, this could use some tweaking in terms of the fan curves. Uh, I imagine that with an AIO like this, you manually adjust the fan curves to your liking. Uh, that should hopefully take care of any of that thermal throttling because the fan noise in this was very, very low. It was like the fans were barely even trying. So there's a lot of headroom to go. I think they basically may have this on like a quiet profile. So playing Star Citizen, temps were fine. Like no thermal throttling. The audio levels were very, very low, basically like room ambient noise level. Uh, so it doesn't get really much better than that. But when it comes to a, a stress test, Cinebench R23 is basically a stress test for a CPU. Um, yeah, uh, the, the fans could ramp up faster. So hopefully iBuyPower will take that to heart because this is still like a pre-release model from them. Uh, so it is the Y60 case by height, which now you can go and buy. But this, as they sent it to me as the pre-built fashion with the Gigabyte 3070 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, 
and the 12700KF processor. Uh, th this whole design is by iBuyPower and in conjunction with Hype. So um, hopefully they'll tweak that and uh, give you some better results with the thermals. So overall, the point of this video was in a build like this, iBuyPower, Height Y60 case, 12700KF processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a Gigabyte RTX 3070 Ti, can it play Star Citizen? Basically a heavy, really intensive game that's an alpha, meaning it's not optimized. The answer is yes, but it could use more RAM. 16 gigabytes of RAM is noticeably short because when I alt tab out of game, this RAM area was redlining. It was at 16 gigs, basically 15 and, and change, right? Um, so at that point you're swapping and I could tell it was swapping uh, because, and what swapping basically is, it's stuff going from the RAM sticks here to the NVMe drive right there. It's, it's struggling, moving stuff back and forth, back and forth. And that's where you're gonna see that stutter in game. And having more RAM, 32 gigs, will solve a lot of that. Now, Team Group uh, is the RAM that they're using here, the Team Force Delta for this particular build. I like the fact that they're using very common RAM that you can get at Micro Center or Amazon because I have a whole bunch of these sticks just laying around as well. So it's not like you're gonna have any issues upgrading the RAM to something that matches these. And um, plus they're using a very fast uh, Western Digital NVMe drive too. So that's that's helping with the, the lower amount of RAM. The 12700KF processor ran perfectly fine for gaming perfectly fine for the you know uh, the 3d mark benchmarking tests it only struggled when cinebench r23 made it hit 100 degrees celsius but that is an extreme scenario you wouldn't necessarily get a build like this uh, to do that type of maybe like video editing or, or hardcore Photoshop editing uh, because the 12700KF processor is not the processor for that. You're going to want to get a 12700K or 12900K, all right? So um, I can do f further videos explaining the differences between K and KF if you want, but this is not the video for that. <laughs> when it comes to the GPU 3070Ti, yes, you can use this for video editing if you want because uh, there's plenty of video editing software that heavily rely on a GPU and it's fine if you are using a KF processor, not much of an issue. K processor are better for video editing overall though. Um, the temperatures on the 3070Ti, perfectly fine for gaming, for the Time Spy benchmark and 3D mark, and overall it was a very quiet running system. So I do hope that iBuyPower adjusts the fan curves for the AIO here. Uh, so that will hopefully address the thermal throttling that this process, the CPU did have when running Cinebench R23, because when it was thermally throttling, the AIO was still pretty quiet. So it was obvious it had room to run. So that's it for this video. Can it game? Yes, it can game. I'm gonna do another follow-up video on the ins and outs of the actual hardware of this machine, you know, showing you the cable management and all that good stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and let me know in the comment section if you actually have uh, some questions and if you have other benchmarks you would like me to run on this particular build. Remember, 12700KF processor, 16 gigs of RAM, RTX 3070 Ti, Abba Power Height Y60. That's it, peace.